welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Hey folks, John Duffin here with Duffin Media. Welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the place, the home, the platform to help you find your best, most true, authentic business voice. Hell, your most authentic voice. Get what you want, find what you need, improve your results, make billions of dollars in the next 12 months, meet the person of your dreams. All right, those last two, we're working on guaranteeing those. We're not quite there yet, but all the rest of it works. And we love that you keep watching us on YouTube and following us on audio anywhere you get your podcasts. And the reason I'm convinced that you keep showing up is because we keep bringing people who walk the walk. Today is no exception. And the moral to this story I'll give you in the beginning is just show up. Remember, there are times where you just say yes and you never know how it works. So our guest today, Sean Gunning, gets to show up from an event where we were literally seated at a table at some what seemed to be random event. And now I've already am feeling well on my way to getting started with a relationship with Sean. Sean is a great good guy, a money guy, a Penn State grad, uh, has some really cool specific daily regimen things that have helped him to grow. And if we're lucky, maybe he tells us a little of the firefighter stuff that he got to do as well, too. Sean, welcome to the show, man. Uh, excellent. Thank you so much, John. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, looking forward to continuing to build this relationship out. It was beautiful meeting you at the, the gala and at North 10. And then we sat down for lunch last week and, and now here we are. So uh, looking forward to it. And it's it's going to be a uh, it's going to be an amazing uh, podcast for sure. I feel, already feel that way. I mean, just I'll go forward before I go backward. What yeah. got you to show up? We were we were at a charitable, a nonprofit event in Philadelphia. Sean, what got you to show up that night? Yeah, re really good question. And I, I think, um, <laughs> yeah, really, really good question. So I think for, for me, and I think a lot of people there, number one, not many people were are aware of what North 10 did, right? And and I had an invite from a very good friend of mine, my one of my, my best friends, Jake Penny, a uh, big real estate guy. He has a, a huge portfolio. And he said, hey, there's this there's this event in North Philadelphia. Uh, I have an extra seat. Would you want to go? Uh, and anything that, you know, that my friend, you know, basically says, it's like, all right, well, I should probably listen to uh, to what he to what he has to say here. So I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, I would love to to go and, you know, connect with some great people. And, and I know that these types of events and this is one of the things that I think we'll we'll talk about today is just like being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we you go to an event, there's a ton of people there. Everyone's dressed up to the nines. Right. I think everybody was wearing suits. You were wearing a tux, which was great to see. Quite dressed. <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite dressed. You know, I, I was I was looking pretty fly myself. Um, but, um, you know, I think these 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 events are good, especially for business people and really anyone uh, that their business just involves networking and meeting new people. Uh, you know, I know for me, like as the more people that I network with, the greater that my business grows from connections, from referrals. So it was one of those things I was like, hey, you know, one of my good friends is telling me, hey, this is something that, uh, you know, we, I have an open ticket for, you wanna go? It's a great cause. I wanted to learn more about what they're doing over at North 10. I actually did some work in North and West Philadelphia uh, when I was in college um, doing like real estate property management. So I was like, hey, like what's what's new going on in this, in this place? So uh, that was one of the reasons why uh, I showed up. So a referral from a friend, and uh, and now I, I I met you and you were a couple seats away uh, wearing wearing a tux only guy in the building wearing a tux so oh it's God. a bold move oh this is like first off thanks for remembering that I remember so folks I asked that question because a very dear friend of mine ours now Jay Duran uh, the culture man who has been a recurring friend on this podcast made the suggestion hey would you want to go and and Sean echoed several things about it but i don't always go to these things i always intend to but i don't always choose to go uh, i i remember you're talking about the tuck so i i don't know i think i did misread like the dress code 
right? And it did, I remember reading Dress to Impress and, 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 you know, and so I go, Random Talks show up the very first person that I remember recognizing, what not who I first saw, but the first one I recognized was Sean and we had never met. Right. And so I go past and I'm feeling really self-conscious thinking I'm the only one in here in a tux. And someone came up to me and said, are you the host? I'm like, no. So <laughs> here's what I remember about Sean. And we're seated at this table and, and you said several different things. That sense of being comfortable, being accepting this sense of being comfortable, being uncomfortable. So yeah. I am now really uncomfortable. But there was a look, a smile, a, a just a warmth about Sean. So we get to the table. We learn a bunch of stuff about North 10. And, but there was a reason to keep the connection going. There was a reason, which was kind of indescribable to me, but like you, it's the life lesson of getting the chance to show up when you're not sure that you need to. Um, Sean, is that something you typically do? Yeah. Um, for, for me, I've, I've recognized that for me personally, right. right? And, and also for, for my, my business and, and I, I'm yeah. sure we'll, we'll get into that in, in a little bit, of but, course. uh, the biggest thing is showing up, right? Because once you're, it's like going to the gym, right? No one wants to go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym and I go every day, right. but when, but if you drive to the gym and you show up, you're going to end up doing a workout, Right. And when you get invited to an event or when, you know, someone asks you to, um, you know, help them with something or just wh whatever it is, th there's there's always like that moment inside of us that we have that split second that we we know what the right answer is, but we a lot of times tend to defer to our, to our desires or preferences, right? right? And a lot of times our desires and our preferences are usually rooted in the status quo, in safety, in control. Um, and instead there's that brief moment that's like, you know, this could be a good event for me to meet some new people, mm -hmm. right? This could be a good event for me to learn something new, right? This could be an opportunity for me to grow and develop. And, and I think that's, that's important. So for me, I recognize that, that I call it the little voice in my head that anytime that little voice starts to complain or, uh, or you just have resistance to what I know is you know, good for me, or maybe an intention that I have, like my intention right now is to continue to do networking events, to continue to grow my business, uh, and to continue to network with really great, high vibrational, authentic people. And, you know, there are a lot of different events that are set up around the area, just in Philadelphia area that you can go to, to get to get this support. Um, and, and that gal at North 10 was was one of them. So I encourage everybody to, you know, get out of their comfort zone, especially if your intention is is to do so, right? But so if your intention is to grow and, and get better, network, meet new people, things along those lines, but then you actually don't do it, you know, that that's where that resistance comes in. And then that's where anxiety, fear, insecurity all all kind of shows up. So has that always been you? No. Okay. No. Let me walk back a little bit as well, too. What was it like for you? I mean, again, I know you're like you're like you're a Penn State guy and stuff. What was it like for you? in terms of whether it was through, through the growing up or even younger adult years, what was it like? And what do you think changed when you say so emphatically no? Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Um, so what I, what I attributed to, I, I like to consider myself and I feel like a lot of people that I've talked to, especially those that go to a lot of these events, uh, right. I like to consider myself a, a introverted extrovert, right? Uh -huh. I, okay. I I really like being in my own space. Like I really like being by myself. I really like being alone. But then when I put myself into a, you know, a situation, you know, externally, I can kind of turn it on, you know, be, be open, right? Like be, be fun, be friendly, yeah. uh, and kind of allow those experiences to, to just come. But I will say like, you know, to your point, I haven't always been like this and it's taken a lot of time and, and work. And, and development for myself to actually grow into a person that feels comfortable, um, you know, what, what's the proverbial saying, uh, shaking hands and kissing babies, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and uh, a, a lot of this actually comes down to uh, when I was actually uh, senior year of, of college, right. um, there was there was this group called GenFlow, 
And, uh, you know, it was ran by this, this really awesome guy. His name was Anthony Vela. Okay. And the, the whole, the whole purpose, it was like, a, it was a, an after uh, school activity event. Uh, and the whole purpose of GenFlow was what is your generative aspiration in, ev in every given moment, mm -hmm. right? GenFlow, right? Mm -hmm. And what it allowed me to do, and similar to what we talked about earlier, was allowed me to, in every moment, when I remembered uh, about the, the, the teachings of, 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 of the class was, what is my generative aspiration in this moment? So if in that moment, and excuse me, like back, back in the day, and I was a college kid, I was right. looking looking for girls, right? So mm -hmm. that was my generative aspiration, but there was always something getting in the way, right? There was this resistance of what should I say? How should I approach? And it's the same thing in business. When you're, when you're when you're picking up the phone to make a sales call, you know, what should I say? What should I do? Um, and what I realized was that there was that moment and through some of these techniques that I learned uh, through, through GenFlow, um, I was able to come back to myself and say, hey, what is my generative aspiration in this moment? So when I was in college, hey, my aspiration is to talk to this girl to get to know her and just to see where that can lead. Right now, my generative aspiration, uh, you know, I would say is, you know, building my business, sharing what I have to share, educating people on what we do and how, how it can actually really help them create tax free income in retirement, which is a very which is very valuable. And I'm sure we'll get into to why uh, in a little bit. Yeah. And and having that space between the resistance of your mind and then what you actually generatively want to do. So. Uh, there's some other really cool techniques that uh, that we'll talk about as well. But, you know, for for me, that, that's where that practice started. Um, but it's taken me 10 years of developing that practice over time, really to get to the place that I, you know, really am, am today. So I've, I'd love, I noticed too, man, in terms of like, even from the college side, just doing the minor bit of, uh, of homework, anybody putting on a LinkedIn profile that they graduated with a 4.0 tends to be was college the grades are impressive was college easy for you uh it was experience yeah i it. yeah it was I, I learned pretty quick how to pass classes and how to get a's mm -hmm. and back to the concept we keep we, we keep talking about number right. one is showing up was showing up right? right i noticed very quickly the classes that i showed up and then just paid attention for classes that I got A's in or or high B's, and the classes that I skipped because you know I was out late late, late the night before I was out drinking or whatever it was, right. those classes that I skipped, I didn't really get good grades in in those courses, right? Um, so I learned the only thing that I had to do in college, I could still party, I could still have a great time. I was in a fraternity, I was you know the social chair of our fraternity, you know did did a lot of really fun things in college. I had an amazing experience. Um, what I can say is just showing up and going going to class was like the biggest thing that I did. Yeah, there was work. Yeah, there was papers. Yeah, there was right. tests. But a lot of times, everything that you needed to know was was in, was in the class, and it was on purpose, right? They wanted you to show up and build build that skill. Uh, and for me, that was uh, that was the biggest uh, advantage. So, I find that so damn admirable, and especially what you just said. So, like uh, for me, I I took the very long route of graduating from college of okay. Dumb long route. No, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. This <laughs> happened to be my path. Um, but it was like, but when you said, hey, when you showed up, you, you know, like that was every time I showed up, I did exceedingly well, but I made a number of poor choices in terms of those years or prioritized absolutely the wrong things. And as a result, as I said, it was a very long, arduous road. So I see that and get really impressed by that man i do um you're um i'm calling you just because i feel like you are a money man um and one of the things in this and i love the fact that like i said you you've gone from working with very traditional money and financial sort of investments and ideas to what would be much more under the radar I don't know if that's the word I want, but but a little like maybe the road less traveled in regards to ideas and all those sorts of things. What gave you the idea uh, to realize that maybe taking the road less traveled would be, in essence, the more direct way to go? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I've I've always, I guess, see myself a little bit of a contrarian. Um, okay. You know, you know, I was I was in a 
I was in a corporate role when I graduated Penn State. Right. I went right, I went right into um, finance, uh, right, mm -hmm. right out of college. And if you look up my LinkedIn, you'll see my my, my whole career history. Yeah. I, I won't, I won't give you that that long diatribe there. But what ended up happening to me is, you know, I got so focused on one program, the four hundred one k, and it's a great vehicle for mm -hmm. those that want to save for retirement, especially for business owners, right? Because right. there's the ability to double dip in tax savings, and mm -hmm. you know, we we don't have to dive all into that. But what yeah. I realized was is that you know i've helped hundreds of businesses thousands of employees and you know personally done close to like over a hundred million dollars in 401k business assets under administration right so had a really successful career in what i did but what i started to realize as i got further and further in my career was that number one this isn't the end-all be-all financial product right and this product that i was helping clients get access to mm -hmm. was actually giving them a huge tax problem in their later years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also, as I learned more about psychology and human behavior, it's, I, you, 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 you go against, there's a lot of resistance with the 401k and helping people get, get it set up, right? Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is it's not in our nature to want to save for retirement. We actually, humans, this is, this is real. So, Hal, Hal Hirschfield is, is a psychologist. He's been studying this for 15 years. And basically what he says is that humans haven't evolved enough to basically be able to save for their future. We're, we're, and, and it makes complete sense, right? Like it's way easier in today's day and age to like, you know, eat that piece of cake or eat that donut because it right. feels good in the moment. And your body wants to, wants to store that for as fat for the future because we in our, in our minds we don't know when the next meal is coming even though <laughs> even though that next meal is is always there generally right. for 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 you know for for americans uh, yes. i i understand that there's a lot of other problems out there that uh, Understood. right so what i started to realize was two things number one was a tax problem and number two was a human behavior issue so people have a really hard time especially in their 20s and 30s to save into a vehicle for for you know, 20, 30, 40 years, and legally they can't touch it until they're 59 and a half unless they pay a penalty. Right. So it, it, it became a very challenging to kind of go against the, the grain in that sense. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was taxes. So I'm not sure if your audiences are, are aware of this, but when you pull money out out of a traditional retirement vehicle in retirement, you pay taxes at your ordinary income tax rate. Now, I have a I have a little bit of problem with most financial advisors because most advisors will say, Sean, it's okay. Everyone's going to retire at a lower tax rate than they are right now. Okay, maybe. But in traditional finance, the advisor tells people to put as much money away as possible. You need one, you need two, you need three million dollars to have to have a, a satisfied retirement. Well, do you know what the required minimum distribution is from the IRS at age 72 if you have $3 million in your 401k? It's $109,000. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you made good money, you're going to get uh, Social Security on top of that. So now your income is close to $140,000, 150000 in retirement. So if you made $150,000 and you're in a 24% 20%, tax bracket now, in retirement, you save $3 million. Now you're in the same tax bracket that you were before, paying the same amount of taxes. And and you just gave the IRS 30 years for that money to grow to then have that money being being uh, uh, being being taxed at ordinary income tax rates. So I just looked at this and I was like, wow, uh, this is a good thing for my clients, but it is creating a long term problem for a lot of people. And I really just wanted to learn and, and educate myself on every way possible to then help those people as they approach retirement. But I started to find right is that there's things that you can do in in today's world in today's you know dollars right working with with a 20 the 30 a year old you know young professional that makes good mm -hmm. money to then not have that problem in the future right so i hope i hope that makes sense it, but that's very good sense to me listen for selfish purposes you would say it, i don't know if you're like audience i was bringing up the host let alone the audience so for selfish purposes, I can completely relate to all of what you just said, the good and the bad of it. And yes. and that's why I want I want this stuff brought to light. Here's a, like I'm always curious when you speak with people now. Mm -hmm. And I don't even mean in regards to the solutions, but when you're speaking to people now, 
do people take it seriously in 2024? You had talked about already that that the the general mindset is often, yeah, yeah, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Um, after I handle all of my other problems, and then you never do like like are people more receptive to hearing that from you at, like in this year, say next year? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the answer is is yes, um, because sure. what a lot of people so because of the different solutions that are available to people they don't have to tie up as much money in a traditional retirement account. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, you know, we suggest, Hey, look, if your business is offering a match in your 401k, Hey, like get the free money, like, yeah. please, please do that. Right. Yeah. So for most people, uh, we can show them different vehicles and different ways and different routes to create, you know, tax free income in retirement that they can also leverage in the now. Right. So they're actually build, building a vehicle that has no IRS tax constraints. You can access the money whenever you want. Uh, you can leverage against the money whenever you want. Uh, and it also creates legacy for the future. So it's one of those things where people actually really like the idea because, hey, they're still saving a little bit of money in a traditional retirement vehicle. So it's making them feel safe that, hey, like, you know, I'm still doing what traditional finance is telling me to do. But I also have this, you know, very simple but unique tool that's allowing me to access my money today if I need it. But also, I know I can leverage it for a retirement vehicle in the future. So that's what we like to build, and it, and and I think it, it really helps that like, you know, that animal brain inside of us, you know, the evolution piece where they say, well, if I can you know, use this money whenever I want, then there really is no reason not to do it, right? right. Uh, simply because they have access to their funds, um, and you know, it's always there for them if 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 they choose to. I love it. Now yeah. it's funny, folks, because this is a longer conversation that Sean and I just had about more of the financial side than the entire meetup that we had literally a few days ago. And, and for, I just, in terms of context, wanted it to come up for no other reason than I think Sean just for that is very impressive. And the things that are coming up is very impressive, but I will give you guys a preview as well too, which is this. So we had this great, after the North 10 get together when we were all there and there's a lot going on that night. So we maybe got several minutes if that um, yeah. overall. We also had a chance to connect better one-on-one -on -one afterwards. And I got to tell you, that's the reason really that Sean is here today um, is, is for that part, that there is so much substance and energy it's, it comes through this guy. And one of the things I found so spectacular to me, and I really do want to focus on this, and I was calling it like your daily regimen, so to speak, like yeah. where it comes from, why it's there, why you felt the need. Um, you post a lot, not just on LinkedIn, but on Instagram as well, too. And the very first thing to set the table you talk about, I love this, um, unfilling the cup. And uh, and and just that sense of talk to me about that, the sense of unfilling the cup. Yeah. So uh, a little over a year ago, I, I realized that I just wasn't in, in a good place. I, I wasn't happy. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of what we're talking about here today has really been a culmination of, yeah, I've been doing a lot of professional personal development my my entire life, really, since I graduated college. However, a lot of this development has come recently in, in the past year. And I wasn't, I wasn't really happy. I wasn't living a life of purpose. I didn't have a, a clear vision for myself. I didn't have that future state in mind. And then I also was drinking a lot. I, I was in an environment where I could drink, you know, really any day of the week, go out for happy hour on Thursday, go out with friends on Friday, Saturday. And it really wasn't until I made a decision to completely cut alcohol out of my life. Now, geez, 13, 14 months ago, and I've been dry ever since, right? Mm -hmm. And that one decision, you know, talking about unfilling the cup, I had to stop one activity, which was drinking alcohol, right. which, uh, which allowed me to then pour into myself, you know, other really great practices, you know, personal habits that I've been doing now daily ever since, mm -hmm. right? And I just wanted to share this with, with your, your, with, you know, your viewers, right? Is that, you know, recently new studies are coming out, like the, the World Health Organization saying that like no amount of alcohol is actually good for us. 
Um, not and, the two drinks a day that they used to say. Yeah, uh, no, not right. Not not the two drinks a day. Actually, they say that a, a close to three million people die a year mm -hmm. from alcohol, um, and that number is actually increasing. So, yeah. you know, it's it's one of those things where you know I look at I look at that science, and it, um, you know, not not only do I have the clarity that I have now, but that science kind of scares me. It's like, well, I don't want to ever touch that substance ever again. Right. And for those that do, Hey, like everyone's on their own journey. Yeah. Some can do it in moderation. Some can't for me. I just needed to, to completely uh, X alcohol out of, out of my life. But here's what it did though. Mm -hmm. So what alcohol did is it gave me clarity. It gave me courage uh, and it helped me create a clear defined purpose and vision for what I wanted to do. Right. So, you know, what we're talking about today, like helping people with, you know, tax free assets and retirement, right. you know, really, I haven't been, been doing this until maybe like six, seven, eight months ago. Right. So I was still very much, you know, that old version of myself over a year ago. And it wasn't until I decided to stop drinking alcohol that everything kind of changed for me and allowed me to go down this more clean path for myself. Uh, and then, you know, once that cup was started to become unfilled, now right. I started to add in my daily discipline of uh, fitness, mm -hmm. right? So I work it every day. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I'll post a workout video uh, every single day of, of me in there. That's one way that I keep myself accountable. Um, and uh, Billy just, you know, I journal, I read every day. And one thing I've been adding in lately is this, this idea of, and you know, writing letters to your future self yep. from the perspective from the perspective mm -hmm. of your of your fu future version. Mm -hmm. So there's a really cool tool online. It's called uh, futureself.com, and you can actually go in there and write a letter, and it uh, you know allows you to create this emotional connection, this empathy with that future version of yourself. And it really it, it's amazing how fast things actually can progress in your life uh, when you're writing from a perspective of that future person. Right. So those are some of the things that, that, that I've done. You know, my, my biggest wins daily, right. Or, or not drinking alcohol mm -hmm. and getting, getting my butt to the gym. Right. Those, okay. those like the two main things along with like journaling and reading and, and things like that. So I love all of that. Now I want to take just a couple steps back in that same regard. So yeah, is there a specific situation or realization that caused you to be like, you know what, I'm going to stop. Or was it just a conscious decision that, you know what, I'm just going to. Yeah, I, yeah. What, what, what got it? Because at any age, decade or whatever, um, I still feel as if. And by the way, folks, uh, if you've been a listener, watcher of the podcast, then you're aware that Sean and I have that in common. Uh, I stopped because I was desperate is what it was. There was nothing terribly conscious or strategic about me stopping, right? For you, was it a strategic conscious decision or what got you to do that? Yeah, so really two two main things uh, yeah. on that and really, really good question, John. So so thanks for that. Um, So for, for me, the first was I never experienced anxiety before. Uh, so for a lot of your listeners, for those that have anxiety, like I empathize with you because I never experienced anxiety at all. And it, about two years ago, out of nowhere, like 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 this, I just had this this crush of anxiety that just that overwhelmed me. And I did, didn't know what to do about it. And I struggled for about a year figuring things out, how I can get rid of it, what I can do, meditation, you know, the gym. And what I realized, one of the things that actually amplified that anxiety was drinking alcohol. And I didn't want to, it was, what's so crazy is I didn't want to give up the booze mm -hmm. because of how I, how much I enjoyed in the moment, knowing that I would suffer the next day, like twofold, especially with that, with that anxious feeling. And, and no one wants to feel that way, right? Anxiety is, is, is a terrible thing. And again, for those, for those that, that have experienced it or have, you know, attacks or whatever, I empathize. And uh, if you want to reach out, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to chat and, and just help and be of service. One of the things though, that I realized is that when I cut alcohol out, mm -hmm. a lot of that anxiety, at least that surface level anxiety actually went away. Um, and what it allowed me to do when I was 90 days clean, right? I when I was 90 days clean, what ended up happening was a lot of this like suppressed emotion and fear and anger and just everything that I just pushed down over my entire life, all that stuff started to come up. And yes, it created anxiety and, and emotions and pain. 
But I, now I had two choices that I could make. I could either start drinking again and pushing it back down, or I can actually start positively working through it. So one of the ways that I started to posit positively work through some of this, 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 you know, pain or trauma or anxiety or you know, whatever you want to call it was, was working out. Right. So mm -hmm. at about 90 days into my, uh, you know, sober dry journey, yeah. that's when I started to hit the gym really hard every single day. I hired a coach, um, and, you know, I realized that I just needed help with an, and a direction on the fitness side. And, you know, that was like one of the single most catalysts for, you know, my, just overall fitness uh, transformation, um, you know, here here today. So that was one catalyst. The, the other thing too, and I started to recognize this after, was if I was going to operate and help my clients at the highest level, right? right we're dealing with money, we're dealing with finance. Right. And this is a very personal thing to people. If I was actually going to help them as best as I could, how can I help them if I wasn't being optimized to be the best version of myself, mm -hmm. right? So if I'm going to give advice to somebody, but then, you know, at the same time, after work, I'm going out and I'm getting drunk or I'm getting high yeah. and, I, and I'm getting altered, mm -hmm. right? Well, how can I show up the next day to help my clients, to help the people that are trusting me for advice? Mm -hmm. And and I was just like, this, this isn't going, this isn't going to work. And maybe it works for some people, right? I know very high functioning people that, that drink and, and do drugs. Hey, like good for them. But for me, I couldn't do that. Right. So I know if I'm going to show up and be the best version of myself, the best business person, mm -hmm. um, the, the best financial planner to truly help somebody, I have to be the example and I have to be the man that says, hey, this is the level that I'm going to live at. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I'm also going to attract higher quality, higher caliber clients at the same right. time. And those are the people that I want to work with. So one of the favorite things that you shared with me before, I want to elaborate on a little bit, by the way in when i was preparing and i stuck it in all bold you can't see that's okay you call this technique relax and release it was one of my very favorite yep. things in terms of what you talked about before um talk to me about that how did you call uh, john with, how do you utilize it why does it matter well, I, I wish I could say I was the creator of Relax, relax and Release, but 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 I I am not. I'm I'm just a uh, a faithful practitioner of it. So oh, I mean, relax, how did you come up to it for you. Yeah, I yes. Didn't really invents anything technically. So <laughs> anyway, yeah. But how did it come into your world? Yeah. So uh, this actually comes down to fellowship. You know, I I believe in uh, one of the things I wanted to share with with you that just recently happened. I, I realized how many coaches that I had in my life. Right. right. I have a a, a personal trainer. I have a business development coach. I have a marketing coach. I have a real estate coach and I have a sales coach, right? And it's, if you think about professional athletes, yep. and that, that's, that's five people in my life mm -hmm. that, that I get advice and mentorship and help from, right? And, and that, that can grow. So if you think about professional athletes, they have teams of coaches that help them to be the best versions of themselves on right. and off the field, right? So for a professional business person, you know, for a lot of you out there that are listening, like, isn't it important to have a team and people around you that are helping to support you and your vision and your growth and, and what you want to do? So with that being said, I'm in a mastermind um, called Every Man's Mastermind, uh, EMM. I met, met, met a beautiful person named Rob Colwell at a real estate event. Mm -hmm. And I would just, I, I'm like, I need to talk to this guy. So I went up to him, I talked to Rob and I said, hey, Rob. And I was very young. And I said, hey, Rob, uh, I saw you presenting up there and I don't know what to say, but you seem like the person that I need to talk to and you kind of like run this place. Mm -hmm. So let's connect. You know, next thing you know, we got lunch. He has this group called Every Man's Mastermind. It's it's like a, a go abundance uh, type type of group. Yep. And uh, once I was in that group, uh, Rob actually gave me a book called The Untethered Soul. And the, un the Untethered Soul, great book for those that are into like spirituality and meditation. It's a really good book to check out. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite books of all time because it talks about the relationship with your with, with your personal mind and and the voice that's inside your head. I think everyone realizes that there's a voice going on in there, and it's constantly talking to us. And it can go from anywhere from funny to scary at, 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 at the drop of a hat. Well, at the very end of the book, there's a uh, technique called relax and release. Uh, and the author and the author of the book is Michael Singer. He has a temple. Then in Alachua, Florida, it's a yoga meditation uh, center. Beautiful place if you can if you can you know go check it out. 
at the end of the day, what the what the technique really says, and it's very similar to that that gen flow, generative aspiration concept earlier, but more on the spiritual side, is that in any given moment, whatever is happening inside of you, whether it's fear or jealousy or anxiety uh, or whatever emotion it is, or if your mind is giving you a hard time, you have the ability to relax every area of your body, right? And you can kind of sit behind that emotion, thought, or feeling. So you can relax your feet, you can relax your hands. I mean, like do it right now, like sit mm -hmm. there, right? And consciously like relax your legs, relax your hands, relax your arms. You can't necessarily relax your heart, especially if you're feeling an emotion, but you can relax the area around the heart and it gets a little bit more comfortable. And what ends up happening is, is you can, you can tend to sit back behind that feeling or emotion or thought and you can objectively observe it from where it's at. And what that what that means is that you're the subject and everything that you're watching is an object. And then you have a decision to make. You can either get caught up into it and get all crazy and go down that, that thought plane or you can give into the emotion, right? Or you can sit back and then you can make actually you can make a, a decision based out of clarity and an intention of what you want not what that thought or emotion is pulling you towards, if that if that makes sense. I think so. So uh, when you do it, do you go literally head to toe? I do my best to consciously relax every area of my of my body. Mm -hmm. uh, one one really good thing, if 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 this is un uncomfortable and you're like Sean or John, I have no idea what you're talking about, mm -hmm. and I can't relax anything. So there's a, a if you go on YouTube, you can type right. in yoga, yoga nidra. Yoga nidra basically is what's called a non-sleep deep rest mm -hmm. meditation. So you simply close your eyes and someone will guide you to like relax every part of your body. If you do yoga nidra a couple of times, then you can actively when you're out and about, you know, when I was sitting with John, I was doing relax and release, mm -hmm. uh, you know, new person, new, new connection. You know, I had a little bit of insecurity myself showing up to the meeting, uh, showing up to lunch. Yeah. And I was and I was act and I was actively relaxing while we were having a conversation. Yeah. Right. So I love these sorts of techniques that aren't overly complicated. And and as you said, if you especially when you can do that where the other person is physically there. Yeah. And, and I very think, powerful. Right. And it's also because you never know, I'll just speak for me, that it's like you never know when anxiety is going to come grab you. See, right. that's the, to me, it's one of the biggest problems with anxiety is if you knew that Thursdays at 3 p.m. is going to be the time, well, then you could plan around it. The problem with anxiety, the biggest one is you never know it's coming. It just kind of arrives. Right. And so whether you are hanging out at lunch with a new friend and everything's great and you can just kind of shove it aside. Or if you're in the midst of what you believe is a really important situation or somewhere in the middle, that's why it's so crippling. And so I work with a psychologist, um, Joseph Dowling. And so I'm loving this because it's, it's the way you're describing this is a really practical, easy way to pull yourself, as you said, even slightly behind a situation so that you can observe it rather than being in the thick of it. Um, Absolutely. You know, and, and I feel as if so many good decisions and so many bad decisions are made based upon the fact that you're simply tense. Yeah. And how crippling anxiety can be. Yeah. You know? And so why I really admire that and admire you, first off, just admitting that that that's, that is a part of your reality. But the nice thing, the beautiful thing is to me, is that most people have some form of anxiety. I'm certainly yep. one of them. And it's like it does time, age, experience, practice techniques and stuff help. But I don't know that any of them solve, you know, or remove. Right. So that's why I, I found it really important in regards to that. So give me an example of, yeah. if you can, an example of when that has worked for you in addition to lunch last week. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, absolutely. So this can work in any situation. Um, the, the the biggest area that it's worked for me, and you know, Michael Singer, he would call this uh, low-hanging fruit. Okay, right? yeah. 
Yeah. And and low hanging fruit is think of it as three different things, mm -hmm. right? And and anyone can work on this right now. Those three things that you can relax and release on mm -hmm. is traffic, the yeah. weather, and your past. Mm -hmm. And and let me let, let me let me explain let me explain why. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason why you know Singer would say these are the three things you want to you want to release first is right. because there are things that you can't control, right? The future isn't real yet, and the past doesn't exist anymore. That's mm -hmm. number one. Number two is we can't change the weather. And then number three, traffic is going to be what traffic is going to be. So one really good example that you could do this is you're sitting in your car and right. you're on 76 mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the traffic's starting to build up and some goofball cuts in front of you and almost and almost hits the front of your, your car. Right. Right. What's the normal reaction? Oh, my God, this SOB. Yeah. How could he how could he do this? And And all you're doing is just getting yourself like tense and worked up. Yeah, you can't control that situation. And if you if you get angry and upset, you can actually amplify the situation. And next thing you know, that's how road rage starts, right? So instead, you now relax. You actively relax your body, your feet, your legs, your hands, the area around your heart. Yep. Your mind's going to keep talking and your heart's still, still going to have pressure inside. Just don't worry about it. Just keep relaxing. And what that's doing is it's allowing you to be present in the, in the present moment and it's allowing your mind and your body to focus on the active releasing and relaxing instead of getting all worked up in that situation. And what I've come to find, and I still have a, a long journey ahead of, ahead of uh, you know, ahead, um, what I realize is that everybody is suffering and everybody is going through challenges, right? Okay. And, and the reason why anxiety tends to come up is because it ends up being a fear of the future. So okay. what 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 what, what mm -hmm. relaxing and releasing does is allows us to actually get present with the present moment and recognize or and and shift our mindset from thinking of the future and thinking of ourselves constantly and to just like let our body go and let ourselves release and you'll be amazed you do this for a couple of weeks you'll be amazed that you don't care what happens when you're in traffic you go outside it could be raining i never take an umbrella anymore who cares doesn't matter. Rain's beautiful and it, it makes the plants grow. It is what it is, right? It's just, it just makes you not just appreciate the moment, but it just allows things to just be much better. And then once you start relaxing, releasing that littler stuff, you know, weather and traffic, right? Then you could, then you can relax on things that are really pulling onto you a past relationship, uh, a, a, a really stressful sales call, mm -hmm. a working through things in your past, uh, which is, you know, stuff that, that I, you know, continue and, and working on. Um, you know, even something as simple as like just setting the intention of not eating junk food or not eating snacks at night, right? Like there's that initial pull on you. Hey, yeah, that snack would be good, mm -hmm. but then you can relax behind that. And then now you don't want the snack anymore and you don't need it. Right. So those are some really fun, practical ways that, uh, that you can do it. Um, and you know, I, I hope that that helps your, your listeners. That's, that's one of the ways that, that I've used it. And it's, it's been, uh, once that little stuff comes up, then you're able to work on some of the bigger stuff, uh, instead so i love that you shared that and i acknowledge that a ton one of the reasons i find it so important is in regards to we'll say i was going to offer this to everyone listening watching that sense of how many potentially great experiences have you had either in your life or business that you wound up not appreciating or not because you couldn't be or stay in a moment. Now, I'll speak for me, and, and that has happened. Beautiful days wasted. Business encounters like squandered simply because you're either edgy or fidgety or so worried about, you know, what, like, oh, did I treat my former boyfriend? Me, not you. Like, uh, like uh, whatever, right? That, it, that It's like all of those things. I'm also a massive believer too in that because every business communication typically is an isolated situation. Yes, of course you get stacked when you have a relationship. And remember last week and the month before and all that stuff, but especially in business, People hear tension, frustration, um, apathy, boredom. What they, they hear it, and more importantly, they feel it. And yeah. all of these things is why I bring it up, why it's so important to have 
the ability to be able to be and stay in the present situation is yep. you think that people are going to understand why. Well, because that car cut me out earlier, but, but well, they weren't there. They weren't there. They don't know. And so they're just hearing the end of the road rage conversation. They're just here they're feeling the end of it. And they think you got a problem with them. Right. Uh, or, you know, and when you think about all the jobs that were lost in regards to bad interviews or bad encounters with clients or blown opportunities, I feel it's so damn important, man. Um, from a personal side, one of the many ways that I will acknowledge you is the sense that for some weird reason, we had two encounters and business for most of those encounters barely came up. Right. Yep. Um, barely came up. You talk about being around high frequency people. How did you know? How did you get so smart, so young? Yeah. <laughs> what draws you? How did that work for you? The, the the biggest thing that you can tell, I mean, you know, ev everyone can can pick up on other people's frequency, right? right. There, you know, so science, especially quantum physics, now is is really proving out that there's there's a there, there's an energy, there's a thread of energy that's going through everything, right? right. Um, and and at the end of the day, everything from my perspective, uh, how I like to see it, is made from energy and matter. And when when you start to raise your vibration, right? Yep. You start to attract like a magnet, other people in, in your world that are also at a higher vibration. And the, the easiest way for me, and this is a, I've been using this technique uh, since college. Yes. Um, you know, I don't want to share my secrets, but, um, you know, here this one. was, yeah, here, here's one. So one of the best ways that, that I actually um, connected with girls at, at school right. is like, is like the most simplest way was just a smile, mm -hmm. right? And the person that smiled back, I knew we had some type of resonant connection. Mm -hmm. And then that allowed me to approach uh, in a very calm and uh, and kind of happy way. Mm -hmm. So it's no it's no different uh, with, with business or at any event where when I walked into that gala, right, uh, John was also one of the first people that I met. He's, he's in a tux. Mm -hmm. And I remember my first impression was, well, this guy is impressive. He's wearing a tux to this event. And I actually, I actually much really appreciated that he was wearing a tux. And then I smiled and, and then he yeah. smiled back. And I was yes. like, oh, this this guy is cool. Mm -hmm. Right. So there we we started to to become on in, in residence with each other, right? Like like a tuning fork. Yep. And then once once I realized that he was sitting at our table, I was like, well, this is a great opportunity to talk and get to know this person. And uh, you know, John, you know, just you know, from that 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 eat that that evening, you know, you showed up, you seem authentic, uh, you seem genuine, uh, and you seem like a really happy and uplifting and positive person. And those are people that I would love to continue to build relationships in my life. So I think it, it just kind of comes with the energy. And, you know, one way that I think you can pick up on energy, a really simple technique is just smiling. You mm -hmm. smile at someone, if they smile back, there might be a resonance there for now you to engage uh, to have to have a conversation. Uh, Sean, so first off, that acknowledgement was beautiful. Thank you. And also, I think you're right, because I I, I could, if I wanted to live in the past, beat myself up over all the times I didn't notice or pay attention. You know yeah. what I mean? How many times did I miss? Well, that serves nobody <laughs> and serves nothing. So right, instead, right. what I think about now, I have this real, real, I feel like this responsibility selfishly first off to myself that when i feel the the frequency or the vibration is to not i just did a really weird hand gesture right like you feel like i'm, I'm not saying go in and pounce all i'm saying is don't run from it right That's me what i used to do i used to be fearful of it and a big part of it for myself was that i was fearful because i didn't want to let you all the way in yeah. And I feel like one of the nice parts about honoring that vibration is most, no, I'll take that back, all of the time, all of the time, that that person is on the other side, friend, colleague, romantic, whatever, is going to give you the grace to be really okay with everything that you say. Um, 
and give you a much more wide open forum to be able to just just give yourself a little bit of grace and forgiveness when you're speaking. Yeah. And I felt that. I felt it that night. We were at this table. There was, I guess, well, there was another story for another time, but there was there was 10 play settings and 11 people. And <laughs> so there's 11 people there. Some knew each other. Uh, I'll say 40% of the table knew each other and 60% didn't. But every person that was there, you could feel the energy and the vibration. And not just yep. because we were seated close together, you just could feel it. And Sean, one of the things that I really admire, because it took me a long time to get okay with that in my own head, to be able mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah. to feel confident enough, is that you've got that at a young age. So you already said, and I heard it, just to smile at someone. Um, for you, as you proceed to go forward and onward and those sorts of things, what are the sorts of things that you're looking for yourself, whether personally or professionally? What are sort of some of the things that you're looking to advance, get better at? Yeah, uh, great, great question. So there's a there's a, a really good quote that I, I like to share to to kick this off. Yeah, um, and, it, and it's it's from the Buddha. Okay. And the, the, the Buddha said, all of life is suffering. Mm -hmm. And if you want to end suffering, he says end preference, but really what it means is end desire. And this this doesn't mean, you know, necessarily end, you know, don't have goals and, and don't set mm -hmm. targets for your future, don't have a vision or purpose. So what, what that really means is, you know, and this also comes back to relax and release a little bit, but it means that in every moment, if you think about it, and for those that are watching, you're probably thinking about yourself. Why are you watching this podcast? Because you want to know what we could share for you to get better at what you want to do, right? And which is fine. But the reason why a lot of us suffer, have anxiety, and look, you know, I'm I'm still a work in progress and probably always will. Um, but to 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 really contemplate to end suffering and desire. So what that means is that means to show up every day and almost have a detached outcome of what's going to happen. And I think a lot of times when we have problems in business, whether it's, if you think about it, it's an expectation of what, what we had, of what we wanted to happen. I want to close this client. You know, this prospect should move forward. I did all this work and they're not appreciating me, right? Yep. And a, 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 a lot of the things that happen in business, you know, come from our expectation, our expectation or our desire or the way that we interpret that situation. But if we have kind of a detached perspective and, and we just show up every day, day one in the moment um, and just really do our best and, and our best can change from day to day, then you really can't lose, right? So with, with, with saying all that, what I wanna also pivot that to is right now I'm focusing on what I'm calling like the formula five uh, or the fit five. I haven't really got down the, uh, the terminology yet. Okay, but the, I like them both. <laughs> But but basically, uh, what it comes down to is is faith, family, fellowship, fitness, and finance, mm. right? And if I can focus on on those five things, and if I can incorporate those five things, and if I can do those five things on a daily basis, and I compound that over time, uh, you know, then you know I'm uh, you know I will have a very successful, a very purpose driven uh, life for myself. So those are the things that I'm you know calling into my life that I'm working on. Um, and, uh, that, that, you know, I, uh, I'm going to continue to, to get better at and, and build and, and grow my life and, and continue to, to network and build relationships with people that, you know, kind of fit into those, you know, into those groups, uh, to help me be the best version uh, that I can possibly be. So. Fit, family, fellowship, finances, I'm missing one. Faith. Thank you. I rolled my eyes at me, not at you. Like it's the first one. Um <laughs> Yeah, and and faith for me can mean anything, right? A religion, spirituality, right. prayer, contemplation. Mm -hmm. Uh faith can simply mean, you know, uh having a deeper connection with you know your higher self, the universe. Mm -hmm. It could simply mean just if if you're agnostic and you're atheist or whatever, it could just simply mean just writing a journal. Uh, and just, you know, documenting that, you know, your journey over the course of life um, and kind of tying something to uh, either a power or to something that's greater than than yourself or a purpose or a vision. You could have faith in the business that you're building. Right. So 
there's there's a, a whole different world that that you can uh you know explore within within that uh, specific group but those are the five things that, that i'm working on that i'm pulling into my life and uh that i think those that focus on can have really profound impact as well it's absolutely incredible not to mention the fact that the reminder i think when someone makes the the path of faith come off as a little less ominous uh, I always find that deeply, deeply powerful. Look, you talked about what is the link for the future self that you were saying earlier, the link that you like when you're talking about writing letters to your future self, and there is a site to go to. What's that site again? So the site's called Future Self. Uh, it's also if you if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I also right. have uh, that link in my bio. Um, you know, I don't have anything that I'm selling in my bio or anything. It's just I just put the link so people can easily you know get it if you already follow me. It's called Future Self. Uh, and, you know, I like to write out like six months, one year, five, 10, 20 years. You can just type it up. Yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll send you an email at that specific time, which is which is really cool. And I did a, what's really what's really neat is I did a letter to my future self a year ago. And in that letter, I, I literally just got it. Uh, so f fun story. Yeah, I got I got the letter on the same day that I did an Instagram live, my first Instagram live, by the way, talking about my journey being sober. And in that letter, I wrote out that my future self is going to be someone that shows up um, and that lives a life of sobriety. Mm. And I thought how amazing that was and how awesome that this actually works, that when you talk to yourself from your future self, you build right. that connection, you build some empathy. And because you have empathy, because you when you when you empathize, you love that that other person, right? So it's like with, with like your son or daughter that you love, if you have a son, if you have a daughter, and you love them, if your son has a baseball game, or your daughter has a recital, but then your 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 buddies want to do a day long drinking event, yeah, you're, you're probably going to pick your son or your daughter and their yeah. event over drinking so that's kind of like the way that i like to equate to that as when you write a letter to your future self and you start to love that version of yourself you're not going to snack anymore you're not going to drink you're not going to do drugs um yeah you can build beautiful romantic relationships but you're not going to put yourself in the risky situations and do and have like risky behavior you're not going to watch porn mm -hmm. um because you're, you're not showing up to the version of yourself that is going to be like the, the highest and optimal person right yeah, but that's and that's to me where the faith comes in. So yeah. I'm a guy who doesn't, I'm speaking for me, that doesn't often it, like express the faith side. And I and I have a lot of like for me walls that I haven't loved in regards to that direction. That's why I so appreciate what you just said, because it just makes it feel so tangible and real. It's impossible, I would think, or damn close to it, to be writing letters to your future self if there's no faith involved because you got right. people leaving in something you know what i mean that that you're going to be at this point and it can't just be you so right. with that being said that's a great explanation man um love it for this first well now i lied two more questions first yeah go ahead is, let's do it well the first one would you come back again 100 percent. this has been awesome awesome john love absolutely it. Let's Bang. do it. Well, that's great. Well, that goes double for me. Here's the second one. How would you define in your world what's authenticity to you? Oh, great question. Mm -hmm. So for for me, authenticity means that you're showing up the person that you say that you are, mm -hmm. right? And you know, we we touched on this earlier for my example, where yeah. it's, you know, if if I'm going to be the best version of myself for my clients and my friends and my family, then there's some things that I need to cut out and put down. And there's some other things that I need to pick up. Right. So, you know, I, I think you can kind of see, you know, through yeah. through through this this podcast, you know, for me, authenticity means you're just going to do what you're what you say you're going to do. You're going to show up. Mm -hmm. Right. If if you say you're you're not going to drink, you're going to get up at a certain time, you're going to go to the gym, like you're going to do it. And uh, you know, for for me, I think that's just the easiest way to explain it, right? Um, show up and do what you say you're going to do. And you know, I think what I've been working on myself and the personal growth and that I've been going through, that you know, a lot of you that are probably listening are going through your own version of personal growth. Um, is is really becoming a better person, optimizing your life, being more efficient. But really, at the at the underlying level, 
you know, it's a, and I got to credit John for, for building a community that, that can talk about this, but all of these personal development things that we do at the end of the day, really, it just means that we're being authentic to our, to our, to our true self. And our true self from my perspective is, is someone that wants to be optimal um, and efficient in all areas of life. Uh, and, you know, for me, it's those five buckets, but right. Right. And, and when you show up every day, you know, to, to be the highest version, again, your best is going to change from day to day, but when you show up your highest version, you do your best, that, that is your authentic self. And, uh, you know, you, you, you let that personal mind go, uh, you relax and you release and, and you show up every single day and, uh, you try to be the witness and, and do things to the highest and best use, mm -hmm. uh, and, and intentional as possible. Right. So, and smile some and pay attention to find those high vibrations people around that's you. right smile around you and, and you'll be amazed at what happens and you never know how it's going to go down sean gunning this is for the first of several i am honored that you showed up for me today man thank you so so much for being a part of the show absolutely john it was a pleasure thanks for having me i appreciate it we'll uh we'll, we'll talk to you soon thousand percent folks and you've just heard another episode of your message received keep watching liking sharing listening tell your family tell your friends and we'll keep driving more content through your front door john duffin here duffin media have a great rest of the day all be good to yourselves bye and now making its way across the finish line your message received has been a production of duffin media